Hi. Good, good morning. And uh, it's good to see you all today. I wanted to share something that um, has been something that Deb and I have learned on our, our mission trips. And hope that that brings encouragement during this time of uh, uncertainty and unprecedented times and even scary times. So wanted to share with you all and I'm really curious to make sure that I'm upright this time. I've had two false starts where I was sideways and I think it looks like we've finally got that fixed. So one thing that we've learned on our, our mission trips is that we uh, always have things come up that are unexpected and so our mission trips can be uncertain and things happen and they can even be scary but God's asking do we trust him and so I, I have you ever wondered what Jesus would tell us right now in these uncertain unprecedented and scary times I think we can get a clue as to what Jesus would tell us by what he told his own disciples when they were facing uncertain unprecedented and scary times just going to happen a few hours after he talked to them. And this is called the Last Supper, and it's in John chapters 13 through 16, if you wanna read the whole passage. And we're not gonna talk about everything there, but remember two weeks ago, we talked about the peace that we have in Christ, that Jesus gives us his peace. That's in this passage. But there's two other things that Jesus wants to give us, his love and his joy. And so how do we, we get those? Well, John 14, 1, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And so when, um, when we come to him and we've got a troubled heart, which many do at this time, the first thing Jesus says is, believe in God and believe in me. And then in the next chapter, in chapter uh, 15, Jesus says here in verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And in this part, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples about abiding, being very close, knit together, and abiding in Jesus and Jesus abiding in us. And he said when we do that, we will have his love for us that's the same love the Father had for him. So what kind of love did the Heavenly Father have for his son Jesus? Well, if you remember at his baptism and also at what's called the transfiguration, uh, the Heavenly Father speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And so Jesus is telling us that when we abide in him and he abides in us, we are now his beloved, and he is well pleased. The verses go on to tell us in verse 11 that these things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And how can Jesus give joy? We need to remember that joy and happiness are different. Happiness is about our happenings. Happiness is about our circumstances. What's happening with you? What's going on? So the happiness can come and go. But the joy is a deep-seated um, emotion for the Christian and, and a surety that comes from our relationship with Christ. Remember, he says, abide in me and I abide in you. And I say these things so that your joy may be full. Well, this is literally just a few hours before Jesus will be betrayed he will face unfair trials, be accused, falsely accused of things. Then he's going to be beaten, tortured, if you will, and then crucified on a cross, dying an agonizing death for his disciples and for all who believe in him and uh, for you and me. And so Jesus knows that's coming, yet he has joy. He Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 tells us that uh, Jesus endured the cross for or because of the joy that was set before him. And so Jesus still had joy as he was facing this time of unpleasantness and, and actually horrible accusations and suffering. 
Jesus still had joy because of what was set before him. That's the kind of joy that he wants to give us. And so notice in this chapter 15 of John, of the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking to his disciples about wanting to give them love, joy, and peace. And during this time, don't we want love, joy, and peace? It can be found not in the world and what's going on in the world, but it can only be found in our relationship with Christ when we abide. And you might ask, well, how does that happen? And I want to go back to John 14, verse 1, where he says, let not your heart be troubled. Is your heart troubled? Jesus has the answer for that. He says, believe in God and believe also in me. Now that word believe is not just believing in our head. Like I believe George Washington was our first president. That does, no, that, that does not uh, represent the kind of belief that's here. Uh, in the language that Jesus was speaking. This word belief is faith. Faith is trust. Faith is dependence upon. And so Jesus is saying, put your trust in God and in me. Put your dependence upon God and me. And when we put our trust in Jesus, what we're saying is, Jesus, I trust you that you're who you say you are. You are the Son of God. And Jesus, I trust. I put my trust into what you've done on the cross for me. And, and that's called faith, and it's from the heart. And when we do that, then we begin this relationship where we can abide with Jesus and get the love, joy, and peace from Jesus that he's telling us about here. So I pray that you have taken that step in your life. If not, if you'd like more, uh, message me, uh, talk to me, shout out to me. I would love to talk more about this. So I'm praying for you all, praying for us all, that we can have the, the peace, love, and joy that Christ has to offer in spite of what's going on in this world. So Lord bless. Have a great weekend and a great week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.